This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on power series. So, a second look. Our goal is to find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for this power series. Remember, unofficially, a power series looks like a geometric series. So does this look like a geometric series? Is there some way for us to represent that in that form? So we think about what the first few terms look like. So we have the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k, x minus 3 to the k over 5 to the k. If I plug in 0, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, x minus 3 to the 0 is 1, 5 to the 0 is 1. So our first term is 1. Then our second term, negative 1 to the first, x minus 3 to the first over 5 to the first. That'll be minus x minus 3 over 5. When I plug in a k of 2, negative 1 to the second becomes positive 1, x minus 3 to the second over 5 to the second. So let's look at a few of those terms and see if we can identify a pattern. So does this look like a geometric series? Are we going to work with it? Well, it sure is. The question then is, what is our initial term? What is a naught and what is the common ratio? a naught is our first term. The first term in this geometric series is 1, so a naught is 1. Common ratio to get from this term to this term, multiply by negative 1, multiply by x minus 3, multiply by 5 in the denominator. To get from here to here, multiply by negative 1, multiply by x minus 3, multiply by 5 in the denominator. So indeed, our first term is 1, and our common ratio then is negative x minus 3 over 5. Now we could use our a naught over 1 minus r to see what this is. But our question here was, what is the interval of convergence? What is the radius of convergence? A geometric series converges as long as the common ratio is between negative 1 and positive 1. So this is what we need. We need this r value, then, to be between negative 1 and positive 1 to get our interval of convergence. So we start with this, our r between negative 1 and positive 1. Our next move will be to multiply by 5. Multiply by 5 here will become negative 5. Multiply by 5 here will become positive 5. And we get negative 5 is less than the opposite of x minus 3 is less than 5. Next move is to multiply by negative 1. If you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, you've got to switch the sign. I multiply this by negative 1 and that by negative 1, it'll be 5 is greater than x minus 3. Same thing, multiply this side by negative 1 and this side by negative 1, we'll get x minus 3 is greater than negative 5. So don't forget, when you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, switch the sign. So we get 5 is greater than x minus 3, which is in turn greater than negative 5. Adding 3, 5 plus 3 is 8, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, so I get 8 is greater than x is greater than negative 2. And this indeed is our interval of convergence. We typically would write that from left to right. So we'll say our interval of convergence is negative 2 is less than x is less than 8. Now what is the radius of the convergence? The radius of convergence is half the width. From negative 2 to 8 is 10 units. Half of 10 units is 5 units. That becomes our radius of convergence. Let's take a look at one more example here in this lesson. We're looking at this thing. Again, is this a power series or not? It's sort of uh, depending on the textbook you look at. But can we find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence for this series? So this is not a geometric series. This does not follow the exact same pattern as the previous problem. So I'm looking at x to the k over k factorial. What is that? x to the 0 is 1. 0 factorial is 1, 1 over 1. x to the 1 is x, k factorial, 1 factorial is 1, plus x. Then plus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, etc. So this is what that looks like. This is not a geometric series. We want to find out when this converges. We're going to use what? We're going to use the ratio test. So we need to see the k plus 1 term, we need to see the k term, and we need to divide. We're going to take the limit of a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. So what is k plus 1 term? Replace k with k plus 1, x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. 
that is a sub k plus 1. a is a sequence, this is a series. x to the k over k factorial is the sequence. The k plus first element of the sequence, x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. The kth element of the sequence, a sub k, is x to the k over k factorial. The ratio test requires us to take the limit of k plus 1 term divided by the k term. You may want to use absolute values, but these terms are all positive, so I won't concern myself with the absolute values. So what is a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k? This piece divided by this piece, which I will then turn the division to multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal. Let's think about this algebraically. x to the k plus 1 divided by x to the k. Subtracting the exponents, k plus 1 minus k is just 1 x to the first. Now how about k factorial upstairs, k plus 1 factorial downstairs? Well think about what k plus 1 factorial is. For example if it's 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Whereas 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Everything cancels except for the first term here. So k plus 1 factorial on the bottom, k factorial on the top would just leave k plus 1 on the bottom. So for our ratio test, we've got to take the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k. So what is the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k? It's the limit as k goes to infinity of x over k plus 1. Notice here k is changing. k is getting larger. x is not changing. So x can be pulled in front of the limit sign because k is what is changing in the limit. So I have x times the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k plus 1. Well, as k gets large, 1 over k plus 1 goes to 0. x times 0 will be 0 for all x. Recall, for the ratio test, the series will converge if that limit is less than 1, and 1 is inconclusive. Well, in this case, that series gives us a limit a sub k plus 1 over a sub k of 0, always. 0 is certainly less than 1. So for every value x, this thing converges. So what does that tell us? That tells me that the interval of convergence is all real numbers. Now how are we going to write that thing as an interval? We'll say from negative infinity to infinity is our interval of convergence. Now our radius of convergence is half the width of the interval of convergence. Well, negative infinity to infinity is infinity wide, so half the width of infinity is still infinity. So we say that the radius of convergence for this series is also infinity. And that will conclude this lesson.